my name is Brian Armstrong. The program today was about history of presidential uh, scandals and tragedies. I talk a lot about the different presidential and vice presidents, uh, different incidents that happened in their lives uh, as presidents and vice presidents. Um, some of the things that are make it unique is I do a discussion on vice presidents, which usually people don't think about, the ones that had passed in, you know, over the years. And I talk about things um, that are personal tragedies as well as political tragedies and scandals you know, that are well known, such as the Teapot Dome and Watergate and Iran-Contra, but then some other ones that are from you know, previous years where we might not have as much familiarity with. This is a group that you probably have not heard much about at all, is the dead pre vice presidents. And actually, one of the things I'm going to bring out is, for a vice president job, it's probably a pretty good job, because the last guy that died in office was in 1912. So if you're going to be vice president, you've got a good, good chance of, of surviving. But a lot of these guys had a big impact at the time, but they're, they're totally forgotten names. Madison had the unlucky uh, situation where two of his vice presidents died in office. The first one, George Clinton, was basically put in that office to get rid of, because back in the old days, if you had a political guy you wanted to get rid of, you made him vice president. Uh, in this case, Clinton dies in office, um, and then he's replaced by Elbridge Gerry. And Gerry is the guy that gerrymandering comes from. He was, yeah. a, he was the governor of Massachusetts, yeah. And he, at that time, started to gerrymander, and so that's where it comes from. This is the guy <laughs> that started it all. <laughs> As a young child, I was very uh, interested in, in presidents, and both my mother and my father uh, kind of encouraged my interest, uh, and they were always... Uh, my mother had been from a political family, and my father is just it was a, a big historian, so the t between the two of them, they uh, definitely uh, you know, influenced me and in my interest in presidential history. One of the most interesting elections, the early elections, was the election of 1800, and this caused a bit of a constitutional crisis. It was one of the first con you know, competitive elections, and what happened at this time was you had to, the president and the vice president, um, they, the offices were not separate. So at the end, Aaron Burr and Thomas Jefferson got the same amount of electoral votes. And Aaron Burr, being a bit of a rat, said, wait a second, I have just as much right to be president of the United States. So it caused this constitutional crisis where ultimately uh, Jefferson had to be selected as the president. And then after that, they brought in the 12th Amendment for all elections that followed there, where the offices were separate. So this kind of was one of the early things. Now, this election also is interesting for being pretty slimy about some of the stuff people say. We think today that elections were nasty. Um, Jefferson's camp called Adams a hideous homorphodical character, which is neither the force or firmness of a man, nor the gentleness and sensibility of a woman. Wow. Adams was also labeled as a fool, a hypocrite, a criminal, and a tyrant. So things were pretty ugly in those days. And then, of course, even Martha Washington got involved in there and said that uh, Jefferson was one of the most detestable of mankind. So if we think things are ugly, they were ugly <laughs> back then, too. History, to me, is the most important lesson. I mean, you, once you know what happened in the past, you won't repeat the same mistakes. And one of the things you find when you go back to history, you'll find surprising things that you don't think of. You know, I always think it's, people think it's the, always the Waltons, but what went on before was a lot more interesting and a lot more uh, sometimes controversial. I have two books that are kind of New Jersey related. I have a book on South River, uh, New Jersey, which uh, I was the president of the Historical Society there for 10 years. I also have a book called The Franklin Park Tragedy, the, A Forgotten Story of Racial uh, Injustice, which is about a murder that took place in March 1st, uh, 1894. That's a, I, th I think it's a very uh, interesting story that I discovered by accident, and I just had to write a book about it. So it's out there on Amazon and also with the History Press. In the history of presidential you know, politics or whatever, there's only been two times that women ever tried to kill a president, and it happened in the same month. And this was in 1975, September 5th and September 22nd, Ford uh, had two assassination attempts. Now, a lot of people don't really play this up, but these were serious attempts. And the caliber of the guns that these women were using were high caliber. And with the second one, especially Sarah Moore, if, if his hand, if her hand hadn't been hit, Ford probably would have been wounded. Um, but the first one was Squeaky Fromm, part of the Manson bunch. Sarah Jane Moore, I've always tried to figure out what her motivation is. It's not clear what her motive was. And she actually had an interesting background where she later escaped from prison and was a, like an outlaw. And they caught her and brought her back. And she's now out. I think she's still alive. She's in, I think, in her 80s or 90s.